What's up everybody, China Cycling here and today I built a new wheel set. Do they look familiar? Yeah, I think the designer of these rims was heavily inspired by the Zip 454 NSWs as there are lots of similarities, but there are certainly some differences between these wheels and those two. But do those differences justify the $3,612 price difference between them? Let's have a look. I knelt to pray today, but no one was listening anymore. A quick reminder to you guys to head on over to the Xvento Instagram page and check out the Xmas jersey giveaway we're doing with them. There's still two days left to enter, so hurry up. Details in the description below. Winter is here in China, and that means pollution. Lots of it. Every winter around this time, when I realize most of my riding for the rest of the year is going to be indoors, I start wondering what upgrades I can bring to my bike. I've been using 50mm Yolio carbon clinchers for a few years now and I have no complaints with them, but I thought about getting something deeper. I've ridden 80mm rims before, but as a 50kg rider, they're very dicey in crosswinds. At some point, I think we've all drooled over a set of Zip 454s. The idea of being able to have a deep section wheel but still have crosswind stability thanks to the sawtooth profile. But that 4,000 US dollar price tag is worth more than the rest of my bike combined. So, when I stumbled across a set of familiar looking rims on Taobao, China's equivalent of eBay, I thought they'd be worth checking out. So I ordered a front and a rear rim. The rear is 24 spoke and the front is 20 spoke, which is two more spokes than the Zip 454s. The two rims were 140 US dollars, including rim tape, valve extenders, brake pads, and free shipping. I picked up some Novtech hubs for around 80 US dollars, and then used an online app to work out what spoke lengths I'd need and ordered some Pillar PSR Aero 1432 spokes. I really recommend Pillar spokes. All my Chinese wheels use them, in like for like thicknesses and sizes, they're the same weight as Sapin. And the tensile strengths look very similar. But Pillar are a lot, lot cheaper than the Sapin. I got 44 spokes, plus some spares and all the nipples, for less than $25. For this build, I went with heavier but wider 3.2mm spokes. To be honest, unless your spokes are perfectly aligned, they may just be causing more drag the wider they are. But I have no shame in admitting, I just think white spokes look badass. A few days later, everything arrived. I was very impressed with the quality of the rims. They were exactly as described in the item description, including the weight of 520 grams per rim. They're 58mm at the deepest bit, going down to 52mm at the shallowest bit, and they're 28 millimeters wide all around. They're a bit on the heavy side for a 58 mil carbon clincher rim, but when you consider the extra material that goes into reinforcing the sawtooth edge, the grooved brake surface and the dimples, it's respectable. Let's talk about that brake surface and those dimples. The brake surface is great. Again, very similar to what Zip called their showstopper grooved braking surface. The idea is improved braking performance and better heat dissipation. Now I thought this was just marketing BS and thought a Chinese copycat would be even less impressive. But after my first ride, I'm sold. Even on brand new brake pads, which usually take a while to bed in, stopping power was a lot better than my old plain ungrooved braking surface. Touching the rim at the bottom of a 3k descent, it also felt cooler to touch than experience told me it should. Impressive. Now what about those dimples? Now on their rims, 
Zip claimed the dimples are pivotal in making the sword tooth design work. So it's good to see those dimples replicated here. One thing you won't see here is an embossed Zip logo, and I like that. There's plenty of fake 404 rims on Taobao that have the fake embossed Zip logo, but I am not trying to build a perfect replica of the Zip 454s. I just want a deepish wheel set that will work well in crosswinds. Or so I thought. When I reached into the rim box to check I'd gotten everything out, I was greeted by a couple of sheets of Zip 454 logo stickers. Ah, different strokes for different folks, I guess, but not for me. I'll leave them as is. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on building the wheel set, as that would be the blind leading the blind, but I got there in the end. I managed to get the left right deflection down to about 0.1 mil and spoke tension was plus or minus 15% all around the wheel. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And it was dinner. Because it took me around 7 hours of building and filming to get the wheel set done. Not least helped by lacing the rear wheel rung the first time and having to redo all that work. So after that it was time to grab some food and wait till the next day to try them out. The final weight for the wheel set was 756 grams for the front and 923 grams for the rear. So 1,679 grams all in, including the rim tape. For comparison's sake, a genuine set of Zip 454 clinchers will reportedly weigh in at 1,525 grams and not insignificant 150 grams lighter than mine. Although, around half of that weight difference is down to Zip's narrower spokes. But, how do they ride? Did they explode at the first pothole? Did they delaminate as soon as I hit the brakes, sending me crashing to the ground? Well, not this time. I did a small 30k loop on them with a bit of everything. Some climbs, some descents, uh, some good roads, and some potholed lanes. I also did a few out of the saddle efforts, and there was nothing out of the ordinary. People talk about the stiffness of wheels, but it's hard for me to say, because I also changed the bar today, and the new bar is definitely much stiffer than my old one. Overall, my bike felt super responsive and stiff today, but I don't know if that was the bar, the wheels, or both. A full video on that bar coming soon by the way. Click subscribe already. Now, how do I feel about the morals of buying and riding copycat goods? Well, ultimately, it doesn't matter how I feel, it matters how you feel. I personally have nothing against Zip. I own a set of their Zip 30 clinches. What I will say though is that, so far as I can tell, Head invented the original tri spoke carbon wheel that we sometimes see in track and triathlon. But today, many major manufacturers have their own, almost identical three-spoke carbon wheel, including Shimano's Pro Wheel, Fast Forwards Wheel, Specialized three-spoke, etc. Not many people will accuse the others of being copycats, and when technical innovation exists, copiers will follow. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery, as they say. I think Zip's pricing on the 454s isn't helping them. A set of Zip 454s costs 10 times as much as this wheel set. 10 times! That's a crazy amount. As for me, the Zip stickers will be staying in the box. I'm just happy to have a wheel set that should be pretty fast in the wind and didn't cost me an arm and a leg. Now if you like this video, please subscribe. The more viewers I get, the more I can justify these crazy side projects when I already have a room full overflowing with bike parts and wheels. Any questions about the wheels, let me know in the comments below. But for now, China Cycling, out.